Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we are going to finally make our way through the Rhea Lucaria Academy. But before we do, like always, let's talk about everything I did off screen. And I did nothing, so there's nothing to talk about. So we can get straight into the academy. Let's go ahead and examine this door. We're going to go ahead and touch this grace. Then we're going to turn around. We're going to activate this summoning pool. And then we're going to come back here. We're going to progress Yura's quest line. We haven't seen him for a good long while. Let's go ahead and buff our weapon. For helping Yura kill this guy, we're going to be getting ourselves a rune art along with a for calling finger remedy. Sorry, right, it's concentrating on him for a second. We will also get the Ash of War, Raptor of Mist, for beating that NPC invader. All that Ash of War does when you equip it onto a weapon is just increase your dexterity. Let's go talk to Yura. Thanks for your help there. That bloody finger was a thorn in my side. And now I'm finally rid of him. Here's a token of thanks. Please, take it. I may not have much time. I'm dying to see you. Eleonora. Violet bloody finger. Yes, I've been tracking Eleonora for quite some time. She is the deadliest of all bloody fingers. She's felled many an old hand already, but in spite of her cess-blood zealotry. Eleonora is a proud knight. If she comes for you, do not think twice. You must flee. There is no shame in self-preservation. Be on your way. Perhaps we will meet again. If fate permits. Okay, his quest is progressed. We're going to hop on Torrent. We're going to ride over to this Erd Tree sapling. Get ourselves a golden seed. Turn back around. Instead of going up the elevator into the academy just yet, we're going to be veering off to the left. We need to go talk to a merchant. Get a few items. There's some wolves over here. We're not even going to bother killing them. We're just going to ride right by them. Live and let live. Here's the merchant. 
Well, there's been an age since I've seen a customer. How can I help here at the end of the earth? We're going to purchase a few items. The first thing we're going to purchase is the Fang Imp Ashes. This is going to help us with a puzzle later on into the game. We're also going to buy the three Stone Sword Keys. We're going to buy the Lost Ashes of War just in case we want to duplicate an Ash of War at the Blacksmith in the Round Table Hold. And then we're going to get the Fivers Cookbook 2. Everything else I will buy off screen. So if you want to buy that now, you can go ahead. I'm just going to do it off screen. These little notebooks or pieces of paper here, I know I talked about them in a previous video, but they're just hints on secret areas in the world and uh, like the side quests to different NPCs. We're going to be going over all of that, so I'm not going to pick it up. Let's go ahead and continue on. Have a safe journey. We're going to run down here. And for all you eagle-eyed people, you can see that there is a bloodhound knight up top there. We're going to grab this strip of white flesh, buff our weapon. Go ahead and two-hand it. It's going to drop down. We're just going to take them out. Pretty easy. We'll get our first Celestial Dew. For those of you that don't know what Celestial Dew does, you can go ahead and come over to the Church of Vows. If you have upset an NPC and they are hostile to you or they just don't want to talk to you because they're upset with you, you can come over here to the Church of Vows. There's a statue in a pool of water. If you go over there and use a Celestial Dew, all the NPCs that are mad at you will no longer be mad at you. So that's all that Celestial Dew does. Let's hop back on Torrent, and then we're going to head over to the elevator and start progressing through the Rhea Lucaria Academy. We're going to bypass all these wolves. If you want to fight them, feel free. We're not even going to waste our time on them. Let's step on the middle plate of the elevator, get it to go up, we'll turn our lantern on. It gets a little dark in the academy. We're going to veer off to the right here. There's an item just down here. Grab up a magic grease. And then up at the top, we're gonna have two sorcerers. Let's open up the door. And then we're going to roll into this wall. It's going to be an illusory wall. There's going to be a lot of these in this area. Pick up some rune arcs or a rune arc. And then we want to step over by these pillars. Just be careful. There is a sorcerer that's going to be casting spells at us. And then we have some marionettes that are going to attack us as well. Just stay behind the pillar and you should be all right. We have one more marionette that's going to try to attack us. If we come over here, we can pick up a somber smithing stone three. Up top, there's another marionette. If you want to kill him, you can shoot him with an arrow. We're just going to go ahead and Activate this summoning pool. Touch the grace. 
In this next area, we're going to have a lot of dude bros or zombies, whatever you want to call them. So you don't want to spend too much time walking. If they hug you, they're going to take some health and some mana from you or FP. So try not to get a hug from them. Ooh, that was close. Right over here by this tree, we're going to grab another item. You just want to keep a good steady pace. Because these guys are everywhere and they're going to keep summoning up. Right here, we're going to grab some spell proof dried liver. And then right behind these tombstones, we're going to come down here. Down this path. You can also roll into the zombie guys. And they will stagger. Because they have no poise. We're going to have two marionettes over here. Ooh. Oh my goodness. They about killed me. Grab the marionette soldier ashes. These guys used me as a pin cushion. Get the silver pickled foul foot. Want to come up over here. Fall down. Get ourselves a golden rune four. And then we have a silver scarab. This is going to get us the Ash of War Spectral Lance. Pretty cool Ash of War. Never used it, so I can't really elaborate on how good it is. You're more than welcome to try it out, though. Be sure to take out all these dogs and then the two big zombie guys. They're going to get in the way if you don't. And you're not going to want to be fighting a bunch of stuff with the enemy that is coming up. Grab some more magic grease, and then we're going to come over here and fall down. Get ourselves the Carrion Knight set. Really cool set, especially if you're like a knight mage or warrior mage, whatever you want to call it. Grab a golden rune four. I'll showcase that set, by the way, in the next video. It's a really cool set. I really do like it. We can come over here. We're going to take this lift up in just a moment. But first, we want to buff ourselves up, drink our flask. We're going to have an enemy. He's not really hard, but he can be if you're not prepared. He's going to give us gravity well. That's an okay spell. What it does is it will pull enemies to you. So, I mean, do with it as you will. I don't really find a use for it, but maybe you will. You can also grab the somber smithing stone three, and then we'll come over to this lift. Wait for the next one to come up. And then we want to face the cliff side here. We're going to be hopping off in just a moment. Back here we have an item. Just some crystal darts. If you're not worried about them. You don't have to grab them. I just like to grab everything. We'll take this guy out. Also, you can take that lift down. It'll bring you to an alternate area. We're going to be saving that for the next episode. For now, let's just pick up this golden rune four.
right over here we're going to light this grace touch the summoning pool if he comes for us we'll uh, fight him then but if he doesn't we'll just grab this scroll right here is another illusory wall we can roll into it grab ourselves a smithing stone four jump over this balcony come over this way grab some Trina's lilies and then I like to run and jump over here you don't have to just gives me a sense of not falling to my death we're going to grab a glintstone crown. That's the first one of many that we're going to be getting. Let's rest at this grace for just a moment. We'll get back up. We're going to kill this guy again. It's not a hard fight. And then we're going to have two sorcerers over here. You can take them out pretty easily. Let's pull our bow out. We're going to use that to kill some more sorcerers. Or mages, whatever you want to call them. Doesn't really matter. And right here, one more. And then we have one in the back over there, but first we're going to take out this pot boy. Get some living jar shards and a raw meat dumpling. And then we can take out this mage. Get ourselves a ritual pot. Good stuff, good stuff. And then up here, as soon as you get to the top of the stairs, veer off to the left, take this first sorcerer out, and then wait for the spell blade sorcerer to come out. Take him down. And then take him out. And we can come over here and get ourselves a For Calling Finger Remedy. Over there is a boss fight, but before we go over to the boss fight, we're going to have another illusory wall. We're going to open up this chest, get ourselves the Comet spell. Really good spell for sorcerers. That is essentially a huge glint sto stone shard you can use on enemies. Does a lot of damage. Get another stone sword key. Climb this ladder. Hop straight over this. Down here. Turn around. There's a hole in the floor. Pop down. We have some smaller jar boys. Just kind of take them out as fast as you can. And then right here is a really good talisman for all you spellcasters. That's going to boost all your spells attacks. So you'll do more damage with them. In my opinion, a necessary talisman to put on for a spellcaster. Now we're going to go fight this boss. This boss isn't hard. It can be a little frustrating at times because it's really fast and erratic. We're just going to buff up before we get into the boss fight. Immediately summon in Oleg as soon as you get in here. 
The Red Wolf of Radagon fight is kind of like Sif from Dark Souls 1. If you've ever played Dark Souls 1, you'll know what I'm talking about. Wow, I got hit by all of them. Come on, Oleg. Get the last hit. There you go. Good job, Oleg. Get a memory stone for defeating the wolf. The red wolf of Radagon. Let's just sit at this grace real fast. Activate this summoning pool. And then before we explore the courtyard, we're going to veer off to the right, come over to this balcony, hop off, and then climb this ladder. This is going to bring us to the top of the debate parlor. We're going to jump through a window in just a moment. Just here. Go off to the left first. Gonna pick up some crystal bud. And then right here is a really good talisman for casters. This is gonna shorten your cast time. So we ended up uh, getting that guy's sword as well. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to hop over this balcony. There's another sorcerer. Take him out. Get ourselves a cracked pot. I'm not even going to bother with these guys. You can if you want to. They're not really that big of a threat. So I would just leave them be. Let him live for now. Let's go over here. Grab another stone sword key. And then over here we're going to have an iron virgin. My advice to everybody is summon in Oleg. And do not be grabbed by this thing. It will suck. like that when she goes to grab you don't let her grab you she will pull you into her and do some unthinkable shit to you they're not that hard but they are very dangerous if you let them let's heal ourselves no sense in not healing Grab ourselves another golden seed. And then over here, we're going to have a really big crab. Be careful for this thing. It is dangerous. It is dangerous because it can do damage. Like a lot of damage. But it can also put you to sleep. Let's grab the golden ruin too. And then some crab eggs. Grab a golden ruin four from over there. Then if we come over on this side, we can see a crystal crab. We want to kill this crab. We'll be able to get another glintstone crown for killing it. We're just going to let Oleg do what Oleg does best, and that's kill random things. Let's heal ourselves again. So over here, we're going to be hopping down to this rafter, or whatever you want to call it. Now, as soon as we get on these stairs to this path, a ball is going to drop down and roll towards us. 
And there's an item down there that we'll be getting a little later. But first, we want to get rid of the ball. So the ball is coming down. We want to hop over. Grab this item real quick. Some more crystal darts. It's pretty easy to dodge this ball. You just got to see which way it's going. So it bounces off the wall right there. You can just step to the side. And then when it comes down again, if you're just over here, it'll pass right by you. So you can safely get by it. Over here through the double doors is a teleporter that will bring you to the Church of Vows. If you haven't been there yet, we already have, so we don't need to worry about that. In front of us is a difficult NPC fight. So be very careful for this guy. If you're a spellcaster, you might have an easier time. But this guy is just difficult in general. He can parry you, so be careful. He's going to heal himself. Yep. Really? So he drops the carrion knight shield. I'll showcase that in the next video as well. Take this guy out, grab ourselves a golden ruin four, and then we're going to hop over this balcony. Before we go up this ladder, let's go ahead and open up the double doors. This is just going to lead us to the hallway that was by the teleporter that I just told everybody about. That way, if you die right here, you can run back real fast. We're going to kill these sorcerers. These are the guys that are summoning up that ball. So as soon as these guys are dead, the ball will no longer respawn. Even if you rest out of grace. And then over there, let's try to hit this guy in the head. Kill this pumpkin head. We're gonna sneak up behind. Oh, we're not gonna sneak up behind him. Thought we were gonna sneak up behind him, but I guess not. That was a close one. Try to be a little more sneakier than me. Get the Glintstone Scarab. This is a helmet. If you put it on, it will reduce the FP that you use for any spell. Grab ourselves a Golden Rune 7. And then we're going to backtrack over here. Let's go ahead and drink a Cerulean Flask. We're going to open up a door over here. This is a shortcut just in case you die. Get some sorcerer leggings. We're going to drop down the stairs over here. Take out this sorcerer. Get ourselves a glintstone wet blade. This will allow you to imbue your weapons with magic so that they can scale with magic as well. Grab a golden rune too, and then we're going to backtrack back up these stairs where we killed the two sorcerers. And then we're going to hop off the balcony here, turn around, kill this sorcerer. Open up a door for a shortcut that brings us out to the courtyard. Want to go back up the stairs. Take out another sorcerer. And then grab this item. Jump over a lot. <laughs> yeah, we're jumping over a lot of balconies. But we're jumping over another balcony. 
Got two marionettes. Get the armor from them. They can drop their armor, their helmet, their spears, and their bows. So we got a lot of different things that they can drop. Grab a golden rune four. And then climb this ladder. We're going to pull our bow out. We have some winged marionettes. We're going to shoot it. Be really careful. These guys will go crazy and freak out. Don't let them hit you when they do that. Got another one up there that we want to take out. If you hit them as soon as they hit the ground, you can knock them back. So you can get a few extra hits on them. Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to do that. He's like hidden behind a bunch of junk. Okay. So we got a sorcerer back there and an item. We're going to pick up the item while we're fighting the sorcerer. Grab some meteor bol bolts. Over there you can see an item. We're going to be getting that in just a moment. We got to hop down here and then one more time. So right here, we want a running start. And soon as you get to the edge, you want to jump at the very last minute. If you don't, you're going to fall to your death. So jump. Take out that marionette. We'll hop down here. Take out another marionette. get a charged R2 on these guys. It'll kill them outright. And then I like to get a running jump. You don't have to, but there's a little bit of a gap over here. So just be careful for that. We're going to be ambushed by two marionettes. They're going to drop down. I like to take the one to the left out first. And then the second one right here to the right, take him out as well. We're going to climb this long ass ladder. It is pretty long. We're going to come over to this chest, get ourselves the full moon crossbow. Pretty cool crossbow. Looks really cool too. Be careful. There's another gap. So jump across. If you can jump on that balcony and then jump across, it does make things a little less skittish or sketchy. Grab ourselves a smithing stone four, and then we're going to hop back down and then hop down one more time. You can take the path down here, but if you do, there's only a consumable item and it's not that good. So we're going to take the jump that we did last time. If you don't feel comfortable doing it again, just take the path down. But I recommend uh, going this way. So again, at the very last minute, jump and you'll make it. Almost didn't make that jump myself. Let's pull our bow out again. We're going to hit the marionette. It is going to fall to its death. And then if you would have taken that path that I was talking about, you'd hop down this way, go down, and then there's the item that you would get. 
In my opinion, the item that you get over here is way better. We're going to get another glintstone crown. So we hop down right here. And then right here. And then right behind us is a crystal crab that I almost missed. Take out those crabs. Get a somber smithing stone four. And then what? Yeah, right here, you can see a crystal crab on the other side. We'll be getting that in just a moment. Just trying to get my bearings there. It always messes me up. Because when you come out of there, you're like, uh, which way was I facing? We're going to come over here. Get ourselves a imbued sword key. And then we're going to jump across. And grab a smithing stone three. I like to run and jump here. I don't know why. With the lip being higher than the other part. It just makes me nervous that I'm going to fall to my death. Let's pull our bow out. We're going to shoot that marionette that's patrolling. It's going to run right off. Maybe. Sir. He's going to go crazy. Yeah, these guys can go crazy too. We got one more over here that we need to take out. Yep, freak out. I know. Life's tough for you, man. Especially when you can't reach the enemy. So he didn't get a chance to run off. I don't know why I switched uh, from my bow. More marionette armor. And then up top we have two more winged marionettes. Again, if you hit them with an arrow as soon as they hit the ground. Which, there was no way I was going to do that. Flew into a window. Freak out. Take him out. Get some magic grease. And then if we come over to this window right here, we'll see an item. Grab that item. And then we want to line ourselves up on the rafter right here. Fall down. And then we want to grab this item right here. This is important. This is an Academy Glintstone Key. We're going to be giving that to Thop a little later into the next video. We're going to hop down. We're going to have some enemies patrolling down here. Go ahead and take them out. We have one more. Which I think he's hiding from me. I don't know where he went. Let's pick up this spell. This is the Shattering Crystal. Really cool crystal spell. It shoots out a bunch of shards in front of you. Really good if you have a lot of enemies coming at you. We're going to veer off to the right here. Come out over here by the scaffolding. Kill the last crystal crab. Get ourselves the last glintstone crown in this area. We're going to pull out our bow. This perfumer knight is really scary. So I like to shoot him from a distance. Just be really careful. He can shoot three explosive bolts at you. And that shit does hurt. Just keep backing up.
As soon as you get at this distance, he'll start backing up. Which I'm surprised that he got as many explosive bolts as he did. Other oh, pages, not um, perfumers. I'm sorry. We're going to get ourselves a really good staff. So if you want a better staff, you can get Azura's Glintstone staff here. Now we're going to fast travel over to the debate parlor. I'll see everybody over there. Let's go ahead and turn on our lantern. We're going to backtrack just a bit through this courtyard. Be really careful going through these bushes. I have accidentally run right off the edge there because the bushes obscure your vision. We're going to hop back down on this rafter, hop over to the stairs pathway. As you can tell, the ball's not coming down for us anymore because we killed the sorcerers. Let's go ahead and get the smithing stone five. And now we are ready to fight the main boss. Not a hard boss fight. Definitely Bloodborne feels from this boss. If you've ever played Bloodborne, you will notice the resemblance of this boss fight. Take the elevator up. We're going to have a couple of cut scenes in this boss fight, but one of my favorite boss fights in the game for sure. We're going to open up the doors. We're not going to use our Blood Flame Blade yet, our Wondrous Flask of Physic, or summon an Oleg at the beginning. We're going to wait until we get the boss down to just a little bit of health. And then we're going to do all that because she has two different phases. So let's go watch a cutscene real quick. Little Calver. I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure. So the trick to this boss fight, or the first phase, is we want to kill the ladies with the glowing gold aura over their heads. They're going to be tossing books at you. Now be careful because Renala can toss a big AOE that shoots out a bunch of glowing books at you. It'll hurt pretty bad and knock you back. Just want to smack her a bunch of times. Okay, now we got her at just a little bit of health here. We're gonna let her go up. Come, sweetings. Time to be born anew. This is where she's gonna do her AoE in just a moment. She turns them into. Uh, I guess they're tombstones, not books. So just be careful for that. I was not careful for that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and heal ourselves. Put on our flask, summon in Oleg. And then we will buff our weapon in just a moment. First, let's...
Do that. Buff our weapon. Two hand it, and then after we hit her, we're gonna get a cutscene. Upon my name is Rani the Witch. Mother's rich slumber shall not be disturbed by thee. Foul trespasser. Send word far and wide. Of the last queen of Caria, Renala of the full moon. And the majesty of the night she conjureth. Be careful, she's gonna have a Kamehameha attack. She learned it from Master Roshi himself. She will also summon in a um, Spirit Ash, so be careful for that. She can summon in quite a few things. The most dangerous thing that she can summon in is a dragon. So if she summons in a dragon, just run. Don't even bother fighting it. We get a remembrance and we get her great ruin. Okay, I think this is where we're going to end the video. And when we come back, we'll talk about everything that we can do with Renala. And then we'll start doing some of the side stuff for Thop and then the uh, secret area. So until then, I want to tell everybody. Thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. I know it was another long one, but if you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't hit the thumbs down button, let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning, a good afternoon or good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.